break up all the lively conversation on this blessed meeting, but thank you all for being here. Um, welcome to our first meeting of 2016. And Scott has given me something I'd like to read to you all before we get started. Good evening, everyone. Before we get started, I want to let folks know that the Holiday Inn Express conditional use permit topic is not on our agenda tonight and will not be discussed because it is a conditional use permit and the town council must hear the case in a quasi-judicial meeting, we will not be able to let anyone speak on any topic related to that case. This, this includes anything related to traffic, landscaping, etc. Once we know which meeting the case will be heard at, heard at, the public hearing will be advertised and the item will be clearly identified on our agenda. And I'm sorry if anybody came out tonight just for that. Not welcome to our meeting. Kip, you got us an update? You guys been making tracks over there, I tell you. Yeah, with the, with yeah, the weather allowed us, we've been trying to get we missed yeah. one. Yeah, good to be with you again. I'll just uh, yeah. <laughs> briefly kind of update from, from, the meet, the, from the meeting notes last month. But uh, from West Cornish to South Main Street, the, uh, the base pavement has been placed and essentially all the curb and gutter that we need to have placed to, to make a traffic split split that we're looking at is from Samaritan's First to um, to South Main Street outside lanes northbound and southbound traffic in the outside opening up the median uh, for median work so that's essentially the first split that we're looking for and all the aprons on the businesses through that section have been poured except one we've got one apron remaining at the Sitgo, Sitgo station for Keith and hoping to, to actually pour that one either Thursday or Friday. Um, the walls, um, really the majority of the walls have been completed through that section. They have finished the walls across from the antique store and the food line and Samaritan's Purse that were down below the road. Um, those are the walls that you, know, you really can't see unless you go to 321 Business and work your way back around through, the through some neighbors' homes and, and see those. But uh, they have been working to finish backfill on those and will continue to work in that direction from West Cornish to Food Line uh, <coughs> to try to get our, our uh, subgrade prepped for additional asphalt. And that would be our next traffic split is actually backing all the way up to uh, 321 Business here on the north end. That traffic split would then allow us to continue that under, underground duct bank work uh, that we've talked about for so long in a, on the way to Tainter. So, Based on the weather conditions, we have started putting intermediate courses of asphalt down. We were able to do some of that last week. Um, I was just talking to Scott about the weather for this week. It looks like maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're going to have temperatures in the in the 40s. So, so we're anticipating um, um, anticipating additional pavement. But really, right now, the paving from from West Cornish to uh, South Main Street is the driving force. And, once we get those layers of asphalt on, then we'll just uh, we'll install our new traffic loops at uh, signal loops out here at Sunset Drive, and then go ahead and get the uh, the project striped for that traffic split. So just holding out for the days and catching what days we can when the weather's decent. <coughs> but um, that's kind of kind of what we're looking forward. I wish I could tell you which day that would happen. Um, I, I told Charles we'd make sure that we some notices out to the businesses when we do get close and we'll get that out to the town too so that people will know when to anticipate that split but, uh, <coughs> looking at the long range forecast it's hard for me to say that that could happen next week it looks like it's going to be cold again next week so we'll just uh, we'll keep you updated um, the closer we get to making that if I had four or five working days good working days we'd be ready to make that traffic split but <coughs> any other any other questions kids uh, there at Sunset. Uh -huh. How many more or, uh, closures there do you think you anticipate? Yeah, I don't, you know, the asphalt's finished there, uh, at least the, the deep asphalt and the curb and gutter is primarily finished. Um, you know, at the most, I would think that there might be one or two more days, probably not even back to back days. And as we pave the main line, we move pretty quick with the main line, so I don't anticipate shutting any intersections down. You know, I, I don't see any of the long-term closures like we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. And those daytime closures that we had were the alternate to that long 
21 day closure that was in the contract with a detour um, that was to be in place. So I, I think we've really done pretty good to get that intersection built without shutting that the, that section of the road down for three weeks. But uh, really, we're on the I think we're on the tail end of those day long closures like we have. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What's our status of the country club board? <laughs> Um, yeah, the uh, the form liner that uh, that they were wanting to uh, achieve to match the uh, natural veneer across the across the road um, that form liner sample was poured and approved, and uh, the form liners are being made in mass production, and I would anticipate those walls to to get started this upcoming construction season. So, um, yeah, there was some, a couple samples poured, and I think give folks the opportunity to look at those and, and uh, move them forward with that wall. So as far as I know, there's, there's no additional um, major discussions uh, over that particular wall. Anything else? Is that shot creed about done there now? What are you going to do to blend in at uh, Cliff Dwellers? No, we, no, we have not, uh, we've not began, begun the procedure that they're actually going to to blend that in. We're anticipating that to be this spring. Uh, we provided the prices back to DOT to do that, and that's, that's just to take the, um, all that rock bolt work and precautionary work with the shotcrete and, and apply new layers of shotcrete and sculpture that in to match the surrounding face. But that, that work actually has not even begun and, and would not until spring or early summer. <coughs> but it is still on the docket. Any other questions, Kip? Yeah. Thank you, Kip. All right. Thank you. Have, Have a good, good weather. Thank you. Let me back up. I got ahead of myself a while ago. Uh, <laughs> approval of the minutes. We'll hear a motion for I'll the. Make a motion to be approved. Thank Second. you. For December 8th meeting. Any discussion? <coughs> Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed vote no. Minutes stand approved. Okay. Resolution in support of Connect North Carolina bond referendum. Scott. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, Council. Uh, before you have a resolution in support of the Connect North Carolina bond referendum, and one of the things I'd like to do just to kind of go over some of the basics of this referendum, all of the information contained in this resolution and lots of additional information about the bond referendum itself can be found on the website connect.nc.gov. On that website, you'll see a number of things, including uh, a welcome message from Governor McCrory, an overview of the entire bond referendum package. Uh, they've separated the bond referendum into some regional solutions, um, and they've also provided a history of bond referendums across the state of North Carolina, along with some financial information and frequently asked questions. So just a general overview, $2 billion of long-term investments. There are projects in 76 of the 100 counties across North Carolina. Um, it will pay for the assets that will last 50 years and pay for them over the next 20 to 25 years. Um, went to an informational meeting about getting out the word to folks so that they understand when they see this on the ballot, they know what it is about and one of the key messages uh, that they are communicating is that there will be no new taxes or tax increase associated with this bond referendum should it be approved by the voters. Just in general, uh, about half of the $2 billion or $980 million is slated for various aspects of the University of North Carolina uh, system. One of the things, uh, while there aren't any projects slated specifically for the town of Blowing Rock, there are a number in the high country, but one that we will become eligible for applying for. There are, uh, in the green there, 312 million of water and sewer and local park grants will be available on a competitive basis uh, as they move forward should the bond referendum be approved. So we would have the opportunity to apply for those in the future. Some projects in the, the northwest area, our state of, uh, our area of the state, one of note, the Appalachian State University College of Nursing building is actually on the bond referendum as one of the detailed projects. 
Again, all of these projects and their, their cost estimates are identified on the website. Uh, that one is actually slated to be a $70 million uh, facility. Uh, so the vote date is during the primaries, and that's one of the reasons they are uh, trying to get the word out. Um, and we'll put this link on the top of our website so folks can learn more about it, uh, connect.nc.gov. And again, the vote date is the date of the primary, Tuesday, March 15th, 2016. So that's a summary and additional information associated uh, with the resolution uh, that you have before you, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Entertain a motion. Second. Motion was second. Well, well, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed vote no. Motion carried. <coughs> the resolution is adopted. Okay. The Village Foundation of Blowing Rock Organization's purpose and donation. John. given us amenities in Blowing Rock that have made Blowing Rock part of what it is today, which is, I believe, the premier tourist destination in North Carolina and a leader uh, in Western North Carolina in many ways. Um, you may remember uh, that two or three years ago, uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, sponsored a uh, trip through Western North Carolina to visit in that uh, their economy was driven by 
controlling. So you're limited in that respect. The strategy, and I'm not going to go into this, our website should be up. This has been an organizational year, and we're continuing that. Our website will be live within the next week, and you can get details. But the board decided that they had six focal points in the strategy for this foundation. Collaboration for organizations to work together. Advocacy for going up. Advocate for going up. To identify needs. We've done some of that, and the town has in their planning processes. Obtaining funding. Obtaining grants. Soliciting grants. And overseeing disbursement of funds. If you want more detail, I recommend that you go to our website in the next week or so. We set about recruiting a board of directors that represented a diverse cross-section of our leadership. There are four positions on this board that are ex officio type positions. All positions are voting. But the people that are on this board because of the positions they hold. For example, the president of Rotary. And the president of our Chamber of Commerce, which Melissa Pickett will be filling in. The co-chairs of our Economic Development Committee on the Chamber are John Hubble and Jim Pitts. When those people move out of those positions, then they will move off of this board, and the new president or the new chairman will come on this board. So it will be constantly turning over and having current leadership on the board. The ex officio members were also voting. We've been very gratified that our town leadership has agreed to be a part of this. And we have our mayor and mayor pro tem, the CBA, Scott, the town manager, and Charles Zarmack, the executive director of our chamber. Our gift policies, you can see again this on our website. We have four basic types of gifts, unrestricted. Monies can be used for anything that the board approves. Restricted gifts. We hope that people in our community may have a project that they want to do. They can restrict their gift to that particular project. A good example of this is the chamber membership. If you're members of the chamber, you may remember on your membership renewal, you had an option that you could give an extra $50 if you wanted to. That gift, that raised over $8,000. That money was restricted for winter lighting. We've seen increased lighting in our town. So that is a restricted gift. Endowment, non-cash gifts, stock, real estate would be permitted as well. Where do we anticipate getting money? Individuals and families. We have a lot of new families with connections to going off that could make major gifts if they wanted to. We now have a vehicle that they could use that would be tax deductible. Business community, visitors, creative mechanisms to raise money from our visitors. Residents. It's very important for our board that our residents be a part of this, that we create a spirit of giving in Norman Rock. And we want our residents, if they want to give $5, fine. Or $50, or $100. Everyone can participate in this foundation. And then public and private grants. The good news is we know what to do by and large. Our town leadership, prior council, this council, our mayor, our town manager, we have had a study in 2008, a detailed study of the Ohio Farmer Report. We had a comprehensive plan update in 2014 in which there were public meetings and workshops that our residents were invited to give their input. And the result of that was a comprehensive plan update which set priorities. I see people here tonight that were on that committee. So we, by and large, now there may be other things that people want to do, but our leadership 
Agenda. Thank you, Mayor. We have four items on the consent agenda for this evening. The first is a budget ordinance amendment to account for a couple different items. One is to combine phases five and six for the streetscape project to put those project budgets together since they're being bid out as one and will be administered as one project. And the other is to uh, adjust the Chestnut Ridge water and sewer total project funding within the accounts that came about as a result of the bid award back in October. The second item is surplus equipment resolution. Uh, over time, various items uh, come up for uh, the opportunity to clean house and, and get rid of. Um, we have several old pieces of equipment from the American Legion building prior to its renovation. Uh, we have some bathroom fixtures from the old visitor center, a couple of vehicles, and uh, six lights that were previously hanging in this room anyone's interested uh, and then the um, so those items have been identified for surplus uh, our third item is approval for the date of the annual stick boy Mayview madness 5k and kids one mile fun run the date identified for that is September 3rd of 2016 and then our fourth item is also a date approval associated with the blowing rock fall classic bike ride which is coordinated and sponsored and through uh, blood, sweat, and gears, and the date of that has been identified as Saturday, September 24th, 2016. So that's the summary of our four items on the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve consent agenda as presented. Second. Second. Any discussion? I just got a question. Does the, the uh, Fall Classic bike ride, does that conflict, does anybody know, with the bridge to bridge <coughs> bike ride? Same people, but yeah. Now, looks on gears doing it different. Uh, just a question. I don't think. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, vote no. Motion carries. Thank you. Public hearings. We have no public hearings scheduled. Uh, discussion agenda. Snowflake parade on Saturday, January 30th at three, as part of Winter Fest activities. Mr. Harwood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, on behalf of the Blowing Rock Chamber of Commerce, uh, I want to 
wanted to give you an update and seek your support for the expansion of the Snowflake Parade, uh, which is scheduled for January 30th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, this is a part of the Winterfest activities, and uh, the parade was originally smaller in scale when we talked to you earlier, uh, but a really great thing happened uh, December 20th in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, of course, that was Appalachian State's victory in the Camellia Bowl. So over the last couple of weeks, the Chamber has been working with the university to find a fitting venue to recognize the university's victory uh, in the sporting contest. And um, what has come about uh, through those discussions is a somewhat larger uh, parade than we originally had discussed with you. Um, so we wanted to kind of give you an update on that. Um, the uh, ASU has committed to providing a lot of the entries for that parade, uh, as well as uh, bringing a, a lot of people to town for that parade. Uh, we're looking at this as kind of a one-time event and wanted to come before you and answer any questions that you might have about that. Any questions? How much bigger um, than what you presented the first time? Charles, can you help me out with that? Yeah. And I asked is that I saw a little blurb here about the proposed cost and I assume that was with the snowflakes 
and I would think that the that this proposed cost will be increased now because of its size. Uh, <coughs> for the people to work from the town to help us with the police. Yeah, well, that's what I'm looking at. Parks and Recreation and Police and and uh, and then I just made a little note to us. I said, what about San what about the sanitation department and the cleanup? I mean, there should be a it's going to be a cost there involved too. So I'm just wondering how much should be in the budget for that. This that particular estimate was put together to kind of handle the scope that that Charles has described. Um, it depending on the number of entrants, and we'll work with them with the, the list, it may be possible that another part-time or two officers are needed to help close additional streets, but that's probably in the ballpark. Uh, depending upon the, um, the trash level, uh, we may have to have a crew come through uh, once, maybe twice, uh, so that'd be probably two to three hours total. Um, so Can that you think may another be, couple hundred dollars? Um, and those, those folks typically take comp time, uh, but that's probably close to the value of that. Yes, sir. Okay. That's fine as long as we take care of it. We even all know about it. We also have uh, John Carter with WBTV that will be emceeing this parade. Oh. So you're going to have television cameras in the park as well. So that's good. It's a good idea. Another big get. Well, I was in Montgomery. They deserve a parade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> put you in charge of that, Al. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions, David or Charles? Mom, do I hear a motion for approval? I make a motion we approve. Second. I make a second. Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Let's have a great parade. Thank you. So we don't snow it out like it did the Winterfest parade one year. Uh, <laughs> or the <laughs> second or third year or something like that. <laughs> do we have any speakers from the floor, Sharon? No executive session. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.